Morning, ladies and gentlemen, Bertha Warrior here. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Well, happy Thursday, happy Thursday. And I've got to ask you, did you take time out to study? Remember, we must study, we must study the word. And we know it is later than we think. We are running out of time on this planet. And the solution is Jesus Christ. And he stated, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. And that is John 3:16. Let us bow for prayer. The kind of gracious and Father, I thank you, Father, for this beautiful day. Right now, I ask you that you will decrease me so that you'll be increased is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Okay, my sister, my brother. So before we go into our courtesy, uh, let us go into scripture reading. It's taken from 1 John 2, 1 John 2, verses 28 and 29. 1 John 2, 28 and 29, and it reads, And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we shall have confidence, and not be ashamed before him at his coming. If we know that he is righteous, he know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. Hey, Connie, hope you are doing well, my sister. I hope you had an amazing um, Christmas. I hope you had an amazing Christmas. Okay, so let us go into our courtesy um, right now. And it states, The Lord Jesus demand, demands our acknowledgement of the rights of every man. Men's social rights and their rights as Christians are to be taken into consideration. All are to be treated with refinement and delicacy as the sons and daughters of God. Christianity will make a man a gentleman. Mm. Christianity will make a man a gentleman. Christ was courteous even to, even to his persecutors and his true followers will manifest the same spirit. Look at Paul when brought before rulers. His speech before Agrippa is an illustration of true courtesy as well as persuasive eloquence. The gospel does not encourage the formal politeness current in the world, but the courtesy that springs from the real kindness of heart. The more, the most careful civilization of the outward properties of life is not sufficient to shut out all fretfulness, fretfulness, harsh judgment, and unbecoming speech. True, refine, true refinement will never be revealed so long as self is considered as the supreme object. Let me repeat that. True refinement will never be revealed as long as self is considered as the supreme object. Love must dwell in the heart, and a thoroughgoing Christian draw from his motive of action from his deep heart, from his deep heart, from his... Matt, let me go back, let me go back. I'm missing my point here. A thoroughgoing Christian draw his motive of action from his deep heart love from his master. Up through the roots of his affections of Christ spring an unselfish interest in his brethren. Love imparts to the possessors grace, properties, and commonliness of disappointment. Disportment, yeah, deportment. It il it it illuminates the counterance and subdue the voice. It refines and elevates the whole being. So that is our topic on courtesy, meaning uh, politeness, being in good manners, being respectfulness, being kindness, thoughtfulness. So we need to have all of these characteristics for one another, whether we are Christians or unbelievers. Because if we, we uh, as Christians or no Christian, not or unsaved people, we all are from the body of Christ because he died for all of us, whether we believe or not. Some people might believe today. Some people will believe later. Some people will acknowledge him later. 
But nevertheless, we are all humanity. We are all um, individual that Jesus Christ died for. So whether we believe that or not, or come into the realization later on in life, we all need to treat others with what is stated here, with um, what is said, with refinement, with delicacy, because we are all refined people. We are all children of the living God. We all brothers and sisters in Christ, whether we believe or not. So the other question should be, am I my brother's keeper? Yes. And your brother doesn't have to be someone that you have the same mother, same father, but our brothers is anyone that we come in contact with. That's your brother, that's your sister. So whether you got your next door neighbor or someone in a faraway country, we all connected. We all, um, Jesus died for each one of us, whether we accept him or not, he died for us. So tomorrow, our topic will be importancy of little things, importance of little things, the importancy of little things. That will be our topic for tomorrow. And so, of course, I have my hymn. It says, life is great, so sing about it. Mm. So I will just do the first and the second verse in this one. Uh, Cause it's five verses here, and then I pick up the other ones tomorrow. So life is great, so sing about it. Life is great, so sing about it. And we can, as we should, shop and the buses, town and people, villages, farmland, field and wood. Life is great, and life is given. Life is lovely, free and good. Mm. Regardless of what season we are each moment we need to realize that life is good regard regardless of whatever we're going through my sister my brother because everything works together for our good we just got to know that so we need to have uh, more of um uh you say an attitude of gratitude okay because i know if we take our um our list we make if we make a list and we would put okay what what all the bad stuff going on and you lift those i'm sure your your good stuff on the other side will outweigh the negative uh, for me i don't know about you but for me it always worked out that way because if you think about it a lot of people did not wake up this morning okay some people are in the hospital some people just lost their loved ones and i've got friends that have that just happened too so whatever it is we're going through we just got to be mindful so it says life is great whatever happens sh snow or sunshine joy or pain hardship grief or dissolution suffering that i cannot explain life is great if someone loves me hold my hand and call my name mm. someone has called your name my sister my brother today whether you might not even know the person, but somebody has called your name. Someone has mentioned your name to the Lord. Someone is praying for you right now. So whatever it is you're going through, my sister, my brother, just be mindful and just take, take a, make a list. You got your good stuff and the things that are going on bad with you. But here, it, it, here is what we have issue with. Sometimes I do that too. We, have, we look at all the, the, the negative all the stuff that's not working instead of looking at all the good stuff that is working and if we put our mind on what is working not on what not going working then you'll have more of the good stuff happening but most we find ourselves as human beings we dwell too many too much time on the negative so if you put your energy on that guess what you get more negative mm. So you need to keep your mind off of that, pick up your Bible and claim some of the Bible promises and you will have a joy, uh, unspeakable joy that will, pa will pass this understanding. So we just need to keep our hearts, our mind clear. Whatever you're going through, a lot of people sick with the flu. I got a couple of family members that are sick. Regardless, my sister, your body just needs to break a break, take a break. And just enjoy the moment. Yes, you might not feeling well. Things might not be going your way. But guess what? It's still working out for your good. Your body probably just need a break. And you say, oh, and it has to force you to take a break. Okay? And then maybe other stuff is going on. But still, just be grateful. Be thankful that you are here. Yeah, that you are here. So let us bow for prayer. 
that kind of gracious turn of father i thank you thank you father that you have given me another opportunity to get my life in order father i thank you for my sister my brother and i thank you thank you thank you for them that i stopped by and once i will stop by in the future father right now i ask you father that you will take these empty vessels father fill us up with the love that we need for one another so when people see us father they won't see us but they see that we are connected with you and we just thank you we thank you thank you thank you for giving us this beautiful day be with each one of us now father and continue to bless us is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Okay, my sister and brother, thank you guys so much for stopping by. And if this was a blessing to you, go ahead and share. It doesn't cost you anything to go ahead and share, share, share. Somebody needs to hear that God loves them today. A lot of things are going on and we, a lot of stuff will continue going on. But we need to be more focused, more grounded and what it is that God had called us to be. And that's being joyful regardless of whatever going on. Be joyful. Put a smile on your face. Things are going to be better. It's going to be And it is, if it's not, what would we say? Sometimes you might think, oh, well, it's not going to get better. Yeah. Yes, my sister, it will get better. Okay, you are breathing. A lot of people are not able to do that right now. You will have food in your house. You have a roof over your head. You got a car that, you, you, that you're driving. Whatever. Just give praise and honor and glory to God. Because He is the one that is seeing us through. And He is the one that will see us through. All we have to do is surrender and take a deep breath and say, Thank you, Father. Thank you. So until tomorrow, be blessed and take care.